now. Bad that is a good spec. point because we did have Luminosity go 4 0 down to Disrupt earlier. And uh, and then all of a sudden Luminosity just woke up and completely rolled over. Them. Yeah, it's it's a it's a habit that we're seeing from a couple of these teams. It's a, it's a habit that is unfortunately sometimes hard to break because when there's a lot of expectations on you, and it's the whole breakdown of the mental side of Siege. If you've got these expectations and if you're expected to take it, and then suddenly, with the force of a thousand rabid dogs, you have an entire team wailing against you, it becomes a bit of a tight kind of fight there. Shrug take Maverick out first as they remove it from Clubhouse, and that is a fairly familiar and common face on this ban screen. Yeah, I would assume that Evil Genius would take Capital off the board, but it really could be anything. A Thatcher ban we've seen previously as well as a Habana ban. It's going to be a Jackal ban. Oh. Potentially wanting to try some of the aggressive holds we talked about a bit earlier. Obviously, sure. Jack like Jackal can play with the space on this map, sure. Has the shotgun as well for certain destructibility purposes, if you're looking at, say, yep. the corridor outside kitchen, if you're looking at a lot of... Yeah. There's potential there to bring that shotgun and cause some devastation. Uh, upwards and downwards if they're holding cash hold as well and just being able to scan feet and take care of that floor becomes a big problem. But at the same time, it's again, you know, how are we going to see EG approach this map? Well, yeah, it'll be a mirror ban from them and Shrug will lock it out with an echo ban. So it is going to leave Maestro up on the board as well as all the hard route to now, as well as Cade. Okay, we've seen a lot of Cade bans recently on Go Kaid. You want to yeah, I, I go by Milos pronunciation. Sure, I'm from the school of how Milos says yeah. words because yeah, he, seems, right to he seems to know a lot of words. He does, <laughs> he could just be lying about it because I barely speak one language. Mm. So when he does the interviews, he could just be making stuff up and making me look like a fool. But that's, that's likely, yeah. Kaid often gets taken out of this. It's the hatch control, it's you're always going to see hard destruction. Um, at least one of them taken off, usually a Maverick or a Habana, just to kind of limit. Occasionally a Thermite gets taken off, but it's less as seen, because if you've got a decent Maverick player, if you're looking at Cash Balcony, if you're uh, CCTV Balcony, if you're looking at Hatches, Maverick can make work of those two. Mm. Interesting, we're actually going to have Capital up as well, of course, and Modega is going to be bringing that along from Evil Geniuses. And we'll have a look exactly how EG want to crack things off here on Clubhouse. A bit of an interesting fact here as well. We don't have too many Mexican players in the Tier 1 Rainbow Six scene. But we actually see two of them against each other. It's going to be Geo versus Mexican. And uh, yeah, there we go. There's two two Mexican players. You don't often see that. I think Geo is the only Tier 1 Mexican player right now. Um, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, if I'm honest. I'm not. You always see the little flags pop up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, the NA scene, as I said before, it's something that I'm not new to. You always watch it from the kind of sidelines, but it's always on so late at night. And you are up late at night <laughs> and well invested in the NA I, scene. I just don't sleep. I'm just yeah, you don't sleep. Around. You're like a yeah. you're a robot that is built for siege <laughs> um, and watching and kind of witnessing and learning about it. Well, here is a very bold hold. Not loading, trying to find the opening frag against a man that might be a little bit too overzealous as he rotates and tries to find the initial hold against this. Swings the shot and then instantly changes his mind with Wraths doubling up on the top back just to cover any quick pace. But this is EG being as fast as they want to. Send Papi Gio, or more commonly known as Gio. SGX is cracking open on logistics and instantly putting pressure against construction as they double up, set the standard claymore, and they're going to potentially try and crack open this back of garage wall and get the angle from the Habana charges to then take control of garage. Shrug have absolutely no room game in that master side and you'll often see the pro teams recognize that and will just instantly take that control. And you can already see that Geo has started to do that as well as looks like NVK up on the roof is me doing his work as well. Raft is very conscientious of this as well. But uh, this isn't looking too good for Shrug because EG already just have insane amounts of control. They're gonna be opening up this top garage rafters bit, so you can cut off the rotations, and Capital should be able to do some work there, but they're just about getting set up to open up this wall. The only hard reach now that Shrug actually have right now is, of course, a Mexican up on that Kayad. So, it will start to go out. Mexican is still below, but it's going to be loading. It takes Necrox off the board instantly. Already the Maestro going to be going down. Clutch getting ready for this dirt run out as well. He's loading, playing his life patiently around the rafters, but a lot of control still going towards EG right now. He's loading, still conscious about his rotate being cut off, but it's going to be Young who's going to open up the garage from below, potentially MVK getting in there to go for an early nade. 
Well, as I said, we saw they're setting themselves up to get control of this garage side, but they've also generally dug in underneath. It seems like they're generally going to leave Geo to try and cause as much attention as the way of the Thatcher as they quickly get this door open. But this is never really the be-all and end ball, I say, as Maestro gets completely dropped there for just kind of rotating a little bit too aggressively. And I guess that's kind of par for the course of how we've seen this Maestro kind of move around on those rafters so far. Aggressive is a soft word for it. The rest of the body start to funnel up from this side as Geo... Uh, closes against, well, just kind of drones up the stairs and makes sure his red's clear before he finds his way in and finds another body, drops the other Mexican in the game, and there is another one falling to the power of Geo as he just keeps his roll across. Jaeger finds one battling back and tries to stop the diffuser plant go off, but there is the cover from MVK and the C4 from Cloudstruck. Yeah, that's going to deny the plant going down. Cloudstruck does have that super shoy shotgun in his back pocket. Modig is going to try and go for the plant right now. Now in a 1v2, Modigger and NVK both very, very low HP. Cloudstruck goes for the Rotate, Diffuser does get planted down, he's got to know it's cash. Rotates all the way through into server, keeps going for those pre fires as well. Almost barely messing in the members of EG, but eventually is going to get caught out. And Evil Geniuses, with a great entry from Geo, is going to take the round. And this is looking very good for them so far. And Geo is just, he's just so good. They seemed like they were missing a little bit of kind of denial on Geo's entry there. He was free, sure, with a hell of a lot of skill to be able to roll in and put, start taking down bodies in and amongst the kind of core. And the only thing that really was stopping him for a duration of time was that maestro playing on the top there with the big gun to hold the cross angle. As soon as that was gone and they realized, well, no one's on the top of red. We can just kind of swing in here and put body down after body down after body down because the Thatcher, they assume, is going to get an entrance, make sure it's a little bit comfortable. He's done his work at that point. He's exit fragging for his life. He's dropping bodies and putting up his score. But then there was nothing to stop the immediacy of him taking control there. Yeah, I mean, I think EG did the right thing there with a kind of heavy entry from Geo because the way that Shrug were playing that, they had three C4s available up from both the Mozzie, the Valkyrie, and the Kayad, which is now not being picked this time. It's going to be Mexican, switching up onto the dock instead, which I think is a big surprise, honestly, because that was their only harborage now, and they were playing it below trying to put electric claws down from below and just holding that lounge area, which I think actually, honestly, for a while was going quite well for them, but unfortunately it's not meant to be, and Shrug are not going to bring any harborage now, which honestly, not massively upset by, because I don't think EG were having any issues getting that wall open, especially no, with Capital. The thing is, teams never do nowadays. There's a thousand and one ways to get into that wall and get anyone off that's otherwise on top of it. You can obviously take it as a flat push, roll the Thatcher on the top. If Maverick's on the board, he often helps, but you don't need him. At the same time, you can go underneath. You can set up a crossfire from Garage. You can push Red. You can even go to the opposite window and burn ADSs and then frag grenade or Capitao because he is still on the board. There's so many ways to get that wall down. At this point, you just kind of assume that it's going to go down. NVK, however, almost goes down himself. And this is one of the things that they tried in the previous round, and I guess it almost worked. Bring the ACOG, hold an angle, and try and drop the bodies before they expect. And this is the aggression I said before we've seen a fair bit of in NA so far. Yeah, just insane aggression from loading coming out pretty much across the board. You see Mexican and Loading both holding onto these garage rafters with those ACOGs and really their whole point of this is going to try and take Modigger off the board before they can bring all that utility to bear. But the crossbow bolts are already going to go at NVK, going to get very brave with this trying to peek it out. And there we go, Thermo charges aren't going to go out. And that was the real crux of this last time Mexican to see a running young, <laughs> but chooses not to shoot just yet. Yeah, drones have come out and they're going to know that someone is droning out there. We're going to know that someone is playing up onto this garage of It's about a minute into the round now. You see Evil Genius is slowly beginning their attack as Necrox takes Cloudstruck straight off the board, and that is one of the two Nitros available down. Well, as we predicted, the wall is open, but the angles are being held a little bit better this time round from Shrug. They've got themselves in situations where they can rotate and just make the ground a little less, well, fun and feasible for the sides of EG. However, oh. the amount of utility and the balance of it completely blows not, landing, not loading out of the water, and Doc follows suit. Necrox now putting it down to a 5-1 as Wrath suffers, and it's all down to the main man himself, Flynn, to see if he can represent casters everywhere and try and put an insane... No, he doesn't. <laughs> I like how you cut yourself off there as well. <laughs> Just, no, it wasn't meant to be. And Shrug find themselves on the falling end of this right now as EG 
at 2 0 up here on Clubhouse. And yeah, I think this is kind of going the way we're expecting to. Shrug hopefully going to change up their site and go downstairs instead to Church Arsenal Room. And yes, it will meant to be. With only three kills on the board for them right now, Shrug is getting slaughtered. The positioning of EG, and as we saw in the demonstration of throwing grenades and making them work, the balance of utility is really coming together for them right now. It's so hard when you're under an assault that weighted and that balanced to find the exit and find the way out of it, because at this moment in time you think, well, what way do I rotate to not be shot in the face? And the kind of answer EG are going is, well, there's no way. We have every single angle and every escape route covered. Just, just die. Just make it easy for us and die. And I guess we'll see, obviously, as the game develops, if Shrug can start trying to find answers for those questions, seeing if they can maybe set up double. Obviously, we saw them go from adding one into the top of garage to two, but it took evil geniuses a little bit longer, but they still got through very quickly. And, you know, it's that kind of development of the Shrug defenses against an attack that is pretty meticulous is where we might be able to start see Shrug get some ground. Kavera is on the table for the first time. I have a few thoughts about this. I actually don't mind a Kavera pick here. Normally, you'll see um, like a Jackal pick being brought here and the teams yep. will just scan and they'll just check the footprints on the stairs to see if there's a rumor up on the board. And if there's not, then they don't even need to drone. They'll just know, okay, if there's no rumors up on the board, it's fine. But with obviously Jackal banned and Kavera up on the board, I think there's an opportunity for a very aggressive roam game from Shrug here, and I've seen it, I've seen it be successful from teams before. I wouldn't be too confident about doing it against Evil Geniuses. Well, that's it. You can already <laughs> see Geo's drone is up here in gym. Yeah. Um, they're, as we said, a very meticulous team. They're very good at closing down angles, and what this Kavera is hoping on is a, thorough, a team not being thorough. They're hoping on a team to not fully a mix of body checks and, you know, drone checks clear their way through a point. And EG are good at that. It's definitely in their wheelhouse. Well, Kavera is also being able to play upstairs in logistics and has that little bit of a soft destruction Activating open drone. down onto that kitchen hatch and should be able to die any of that going through. That therefore forces a roam clear for EG and they're going to have to chase this cav down if they want to bring in the round. But it doesn't look like they're even that bothered about it right now. Loading is going to make a rotate for himself here. And he's recognizing the Rome clear is coming up from the opposite side. And he's going to go for a rotate right now. But there is going to be Modiga. He's going to be outside on the garage. Raptors should be able to see him. And there we go. All oh, the panic from loading with a drone chasing him as well. As Mo is going to take him straight up off the board. And there she goes. It was a nice idea. And it was a good attempt. But, well... You've definitely seen that EG have woken up on the right side of the bed and had their favorite cereals because they are here and they are well awake and well aware of all of the motions and movements you are putting down against them. They start to find themselves, I guess, clearing out the first floor before they begin their barrage against the basement with Flynn dug in, ready to bandit trick and Kai doing his best to hold onto the hatch. We saw Maestro being a little bit aggressive and this is where he's probably going to find some swing as MVK starts opening up that kitchen corridor and just making the space below in Armory more and more uncomfortable for the defenders. But at this point, they've still got a minute 10 to get these hatches open, get control of Moto, get control of Kitchen, and, well, get control of Point. It's very awkward. Young just has to wait for Mbappe Geo to come down and help him out there on the Moto hatch, but you should be able to get it open. And now, really, the push can come from anywhere for EG because they've got a lot of stuff open that they need to, but it's looking like primarily a church push to be coming down now. Fireballs are going to come down, but just behind the generator, behind E-Box in blue. We'll see lots of drones still coming up from EG. Just a few seconds left to go on the clock, and NVK is actually injured right now. No, he's not! He's 1HP in a dream! Oh my god, how does he get away with it, Fluke? The power of wanting to kill people with grenades, I think. Cloudstruck does put Geo out of his misery, brings it back to a 4-4, and now it's a matter of trying to find your way down. So far, good movements from Shrug. They've pulled away from the open hatches. They've been able to set themselves in positions to get them if they drop, so it makes them uncomfortable, I say, apart from Cloudstruck, who decides to just take a moment and a breather out beneath the moto hatch. But with 15 seconds on the board, now they've got to find their way in point. Necrox drops Flynn and finds the double as Thermite goes for the plant, but without the cover, this could be shut down from some information that's already been pinged, goes for the oh, wall bang yes. and they find it, NBK has to find the last man and he just has to hide and shrug. With the ability of hide and seek and great information on the point to pick the diffuser out and the bravery of a thousand souls, find their first round. 
Absolutely great play from Rafa right there at the end to just last second deny the plank going down. Just a round winning kill coming out from Rafa. We'll put down EG and Shrug will finally find their first round up on the board. It seemed like EG were taking that very, very, very slowly. But I think they were doing it so that Shrug wouldn't know exactly where the push is going to be coming from. Because generally, if you're going for that kitchen push, you want to open up dirt and you want to open up onto the kitchen hatch and you just want to go that way. If you want to go for a church push, you push blue and you push uh, the church wall and you open up moto hatch. So kind of, you know, EG keeping their options open. And I think that's why as well that they didn't necessarily push dirt. Because they know that Flynn has to play aggressively on that dirt area if he wants to deny the push. Him going down as well, with great shot coming out from EG. Like, that really puts Shrug on the back foot there, but really good reactions coming out. And, it'll, and just that, the fact that Raft is allowed to survive in blue lets him know it's not a church push as well, on top of all of that. So, good old, good old fashioned Hail Mary. Yeah. Buzzer beat a bit of murder there to bring themselves their first round clash is the one that is sick pick two they've opted to not go to cctv they're going to take jim and bedroom instead and see if they can make it work for them the lineup that they've got is generally the standard you see here castle's going to reinforce off jim they're going to try and have bandit keep a bit of a hole on jacuzzi with maybe a bit of a wall in front that's where i'm thinking that clash might play unless they put her on the opposite side to try and slow the roll from uh, cash side. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting setup with the Clash. I'm not really sure how the Clash fits into this. I'm gonna guess that Clash is gonna block the gym door so that yeah. the bandit can continue the bandit so, trick. And I haven't, I haven't seen that before. Said that. Yeah, but I wanted to sound like <laughs> okay. I said it. it oh, smart. that's fair. Yeah, just... but the, but the thing is about that is that that gym door is actually castled right now. So yeah. it kind of allows Cloudstruck, I guess, to play this a little more fluently than he would like to do. I think that's one of the big things that they're trying to utilize as well as a team against EG is they're trusting EG to be a little bit overzealous with their pace. They're kind of going, well, they're going to aim for this castle wall. They're going to try and drop this and drop that. Sure. And then hopefully they find a stumble. But it's often tough to stumble EG with all of this stuff. Yeah, I often say that, you know, if you're setting up a plan that makes the other team try and make a mistake, I don't think it's a good plan, really, especially against such a regimented team like EG. But we'll have a look at how it is going to be going through. And the thing that we notice about EG is they like to take lots and lots of control very early on, just open up whatever they can. But they're getting set up on this jacuzzi wall to try and see what they can do here. Thatchers and towers and everything should just come down here shortly as Young tries to get open the wall. And there we go. Looks like he should be able to get it open soon enough. And there we go, Cloud Shook should be able to do a little bit of info up on this area, but just see that instantly from EG. As soon as that wall's open, just a flurry of drones comes through. Yeah, information is the name of the game, and well, EG are kind of writing the book on it. Flynn has pulled back slightly, and there is Cloud just trying to hold the angle and force them with no immediacy to be able to charge in. Flynn is getting a bit bold from the information, is going to try the C4 over the top and swings it a little bit wide there. Unfortunately, can't find the quarterback skill that the murdering Jaeger had in the previous round. But again, that clash is slowing the roll. And you can see that EG is setting themselves up to try and put pressure on the back of the point as Necrox does finally take the bandit out of the equation. So lots of control for EG and all the roam setups gone down as Necrox finds the uh, kill onto Raph there. Now a 3v5 and EG are just going straight over their execute. I mean, Necrox has the rotation. He's actually going to move into construction. He takes down one. There he goes loading. It's a triple kill for Necrox. A quadruple kill for Necrox as he takes down Mexicans all down to Cloud Truck. And Necrox is hungry for the ace, but Mo Digger is going to be the one who takes him down. EG take round number four flawlessly. And again from EG just having so much control of the map early on. We see that from the opposite side, Necrox is trying to get control over server on construction. We see the whole push going over Jacuzzi. We see drones going out into gym. They know exactly where the setup is as well. But there's also just cutting off all the rotation. Look at that. Necrox is just doing the work today on Habana. Yeah, he doesn't want to waste any time. He wants to he wants to push his way through these games. He wants to find himself at the LAN and find himself at the Major a little bit further down the line. They're going to opt for CCTV. They're going to swap back to their A plan because that gym attack was pretty flawless and it was flawless against a bit of a shake-up as well obviously they tried to sick pick in the clash to i guess make ripples in the water but the only ripples it made is like okay well the players that are already putting pressure on the back just 
come in and put a little bit more pressure. We'll draw them away or make them start to make mistakes, as Shrug did. And then it was a little bit of an easy close down from that point yeah, on for AG. And that's the thing about them, as you said, is they are so multifaceted in these attacks. They're on every single side, at every single window, and every single corner. And if they're not, then you can probably assume that at least one of their drones is or has been recently. Everything is coordinated, and it's all kind of coming together like a well-made watch right now. Yeah, well, we'll have a look how that watch is going to tick as we move into round number five. Shrug again, I'm going to attempt the CCTV defense, but in the last few attempts we've seen from Shrug for this, this has been nothing short of a disaster coming out. And EG have done really well to get early control. I think maybe Shrug could benefit from a bit of a master bedroom roam here. But honestly, EG just been so good at getting like really good early control coming out. But another small peak going to come out from loading. Well, I mean, he's gonna keep trying it. It's, <laughs> he's gonna keep, he's gonna keep throwing the bullets to the wind and seeing if any of them drift in the right way. They are putting a bit of an aggressive roam towards the strip side, which is, you know, if unchecked for a long period of time, we know EG spend a fair bit of time focusing on getting their garage quad wall open and then setting themselves up. So if they find one on the far side and might be able to at least pull some of the thread out of the jumper, it might end up with some good ground under their feet. But in the same time, it's EG. They're setting themselves up for the same push that they've generally running before, and they've run it very, very continually at this high standard. So I guess we'll just see if Shrug again, if they can potentially push a little bit more attention away from the point, give themselves a bit more width on a very wide map and find more of their feet in slightly less fish in a barrel situations. I like the, they played the, the Cade down in Garage because he can just Cade trick there very very comfortably and he can just make sure that the habana cannot get open that little tiny hole to cut off the garage rafters rotation so and it also allows him as well just on top of that to play a nitro below and play that very powerful shotgun below to keep control yep. of lounge if they want to do that as well but again from shrug there isn't a lot of hard boost now other than that kaid and he's been playing down in garage so eg should have no con no problem getting that early control and already Cloud Shrug going to be taken off the board. That's one Nitro down. We've still got two more to go from Shrug. And don't, don't forget, the Nitro in the first round was actually almost round winning. But no, actually, Mexican doesn't have a Nitro. He has Impact. So it's only Flynn who has that Nitro and that Planter now. Well, they took out the man that was on the far side roam. And now it's just a matter of diverting all their attention to the point. Yet again, they start to set up from multiple different sides. MVK is going to push against Red in the bottom of the lounge and see if they can get control underneath it via Garage. In the same time, Geo is creeping around the backside on logistics and construction. They're aware he's there, sure, but this is as far as he needs to go because he's acting as the anvil now and he's going to let the hammer of the opposite sides of the attack start to collapse against him. In the Ooh. meantime, not loading, finds Necrox, but the trade comes out from Mo Digger. And now it's just a matter, again, of trying to find the bodies. And they're getting a bit aggressive as Flynn finds Young, the Jaeger finds a second, and this is Shrug kind of relishing in the fact that, well, why don't we push them? Much, much more aggressive Shrug. I think they kind of recognize now that EG do this four and one push, and I've talked about it a couple times as well. We've seen that our do a bunch of bunch of teams do actually tend to do this now, especially high level teams where they have four guys who go to one end, as you said, the hammer. And then they have the other guy who's taken over a lot of control, who goes to the other side, and as you said, kind of the anvil. And I, I do like that kind of hammer anvil approach. The problem is with that is while it lets you gain a lot of control very, very early on, is that if the other team just pushes you and they take those gunfights early on, they can really heavily find you. And Shrug picked the perfect opportunities to play aggressively there. There was no garage control for EG there because of that K tricking going on, and I think that was real. That was a real crux of that defense for Shrug. If they weren't able to do that, they would have lost that garage control very, very early on. Yeah. Well, Church and Arsenal, we're looking at a 3-2 split, maybe a 3-3 split, if they can replicate the heroics that they brought to this point the first time Jack round. E.g., weird bomb. doesn't it is to say, the response ball is now in their court. And let's see if they can find a way to take a point that, yes, they had a lot of the map control. They took the Roma down with a lot of efficiency. And then from that point onwards, when the push came to the shove, they stumbled a little bit, unfortunately. And again, the heroics of a Jaeger who found a body across with the good on point information was able to keep the swing of the round in their favor even when i think it was a three one still in operators left standing all the one had to do was hide for the remaining couple of seconds and 
Well, that's the nightmare of those style of pushes. If one thing goes wrong, it can absolutely break the round. Whereas at least if you find your way through a bit quicker, as we saw on that gym push, well, you get a couple of attempts at actually trying to get the diffuser down. There's a lot more bodies going around and spreading themselves and yeah, utility around the map this time. Obviously, they've put the hard reinforcements and now they've doubled their operator count on the top floor to potentially make it more of a firefight. Instead of giving the ground early and letting the Cavera get droned out, well, let's try and keep... Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I do like this strategy from Shrug as well, and uh, yeah, a bit of fun on the Legion. I think Legion's just one of those operators that can find their way into pretty much any lineup. And to be able to keep that blue control as well, it's going to help Wrath out quite a lot if Legion mates are going to be deployed in that area. And, uh, and I think the real crux of that round as well, when Wrath did win it, that it was allowing that Wrath did stay alive up in blue. Because Green Necrox, he finds the first kill of the round already, yet again, Cloudstruck going to go down so early on. That's the third, third time. The third, Th third yeah. time Necrox has got the opening frag against Cloudstruck. <laughs> Some people are just not having a good day today. No. But Cloudstruck will be playing on that Maestro, so the Maestro cam is going to be a little bit more less ineffective, and uh, it's not going too well overall for Shrug right now. His loading is also going to be found as well. That's the Nitro off the board, and leaves only one Nitro left remaining. Wrath is going to try and duel it out onto Secret Stairs, but unable to find a kill just yet. And I like this from Mexican, actually. Playing very aggressively up onto the main stairs. Well, as we saw in the previous round, sometimes aggression is the right response. Because if you can utilize it to take advantage of a team that's getting a little bit too comfortable on the map and you strike back, yeah, they might pick up a trade, but body for body for body, you can really pull apart an attack in that kind of setup. With a bit of bravery, you never really know what the answer is going to be, especially when I guess you're kind of looking down on EG five operators versus your three. However, that man gets droned out, and Geo is going to put some pressure from above, throw the Thatcher at the wall, and Necrox is going to double down. And well, see if he can keep finding his way towards higher and higher double figures on his body count. In the meantime, Mexican has decided to take a little bit more of an on-point, yet still vertical aggression, to try and find any bodies that start to roam in the kitchen to cook up some trouble. In the meantime, the hatches are starting to be cracked open, and the utility is being blown on the other side as well. This is a consistent barrage from an evil geniuses that definitely want to attack this with a little bit more pace and pepper than they did previously. The sledge causing a lot of issues for this shotgun to try and find some comfort, oh. but it does find Young and the Diffuser, but they will know exactly where he is now and he has to try and keep his movement hot. There oh. is a second as he takes NVK out of the equation and finds himself in a double with Flynn dropping Geo in the meantime across church side. My god, Mexican is just really putting hell in a cell right now with the shotgun. Diffuser will be recovered by Necrox soon, and now it's a 2v3, but there's only 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Ichi really got to start to move if they want to make a win here. Wrath looking at Moto, expecting a push to be coming through there. Looks like Legion Mines are going to be still deployed. Just Wrath finds one, Wrath finds two, and Shrug find their third round on defense. What is happening right now? What a great play from Mexican as well. And also, we said. Well, you said on the main stairs, like him playing aggressively there, like you, you have no idea how that's going to be for you. Like, but it's always good to just be that kind of early aggressive. But I think he mainly did that just to take drones off the board. Yeah, hey, well, that's the thing because they're a big part of EG. We've commented on the fact that they'll lead bodies in with them. They'll breach a wall and the first thing that goes through is a drone, which is actually the best way of doing it for people watching. Normally, it's unless you're already aware of where people are. Drone check. Don't face check. Drones save lives. Um, but at the same time, if you can shut that down, if you can keep them kind of without a utility that I'm not going to say it's a crutch, but it's a big part of how they like to play with a slow setup and a kind of big, heavy push all around one moment, the more you can take away from that information wise, the more you can take out of the sales. Well, we see moments like that. We see them trying to open as much holes a bit later on in the round. We see them almost struggling to get the initial push. However... They GG, just defense. a couple of rounds just completely thrown away by them. Some some really easy early kills going in their favor, and then all of a sudden you have a you have a Mexican below with a shotgun, and he just blows people's heads off. So it is going to be a three three all tied up here, and EG you can move on to the defense and arguably a defender sided situation. But honestly, with the bans, I feel like the attackers still have a huge amount of utility here, especially with Capital. I think that's the big thing for me is that Capital remaining up. 
is a uh, big question mark. But the knight actually could be bringing you shrug, shrug. They could be bringing the twitch instead. And obviously they took off Jackal. Jackal was their ban and their removal. So I'm curious to see how much of the space of this map plays that they actually want to play with. Because they've obviously thrown NVK on the Legion, who's struggling with a sticky floor there to try and make his way around on the gym side. Um, but in the meantime, it's, you know, how much of this map are they going to try and keep hot? How much are they going to try and strike back? On this basement point, we're probably going to see it the least, I would say. Well, I'll we'll have a look at how this is going to be played out as Mexican finds his way through into the lounge already. And I feel like the Twitch here is just purely for gun skill. And uh, we'll have a look at how Mexican wants to deploy all of this as we move through further into round 7. And already that main test control going into the favor of Shrug. So EG not really playing this as aggressively as I would have thought with, as you said, that Jackal band. That's it. I mean, this is a very big point. There's a lot of ways to get in. So even if you do get to the kind of places you need to crack open with pace, as we've seen from EG, when it comes to getting inside, that doesn't mean you've got control. The same way it does on, well, almost every other game oh, in Siege. And VK takes care of Cloudstruck, who for the fourth time today is the first name off the board, unfortunately. But it was with some pretty precise and well, deadly shooting there from the man underneath. And now you can see they're actually cracking their way in through Moto. They're trying to get Church Wall open as fast as possible. They are in a position here to, well, they're going to smoke it, not impact trick it or try anything else. And NVK is going to try and peer around the side and get the man from behind. Not expecting the aggression, but aiming a little bit too high. Sees the back of the IQ and pre-fires against it, but there is the shoulder cover there from the Thermite that is able to at least get one back in their favor. Flynn is in a, well, he's in less than hot water now as he gets cooked out. And Necrox is going to again find oh. more Aggression and find the double! And Necrox is just fragging out of his mind today as Loading finds himself here in a 1v4. Still has one of those EMPs remaining, but other than that, not a huge amount of utility. We'll go for the drop through onto Oil Pit and see what he can do as he moves into blue, but there's still barbed wire up in here as well as a Jaeger playing up in here. It's gonna be Mo who tries to deal out with him, goes to the pre fires to the crouch, it takes him down, and Evil Geniuses will take round number seven. Things are looking absolutely beautiful for them right now. And yeah, you really gotta feel for Cloud Shook at this point. <laughs> he's not having the best he's not having the best time so far. Is that four opening that's, deaths that's now for Cloud four, Shook? Four opening deaths, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, half of the rounds have been Cloud Shook opening deaths. That's uh but it's not, it's not who good. who knows where his future might hold if he can find a way to stay alive, he might be able to do Cloud Chases. We might be able to see some insane stuff from him. Protect President Clabstruck, I think, is the purpose of the game now. CCTV in cash room. Uh, we will swing up to... Going to bring the bandit to try and stem the flow against it. Alibi has some good uses here with the amount of windows and pre-fires and positions that are often utilized by the attack. G, you're going to stick the pick off of the castle and bring the... Yeah, the mozzie instead. I actually, I actually like that because I mean, it, it's always good to like hide the mozzie and hide that C4, hide uh -huh. that huge amount of utility. But also, potentially trying to trick Shrug into thinking that it's a Attack gym hold rather than a CC. Which I don't think Shrug again, like they haven't changed too much. They line up here. Wrath has moved off the IQ and onto the Sophia instead now, and Cloud Shrug upon that capital, which I'm glad to see. No longer Mexican on the Twitch as well, which I'm also glad to see him bringing the Havana. I think the Havana is pretty essential here, and we saw it with EG as well. When they opened up that garage rafters angle with the Havana, things were going very, very well for them. As soon as they weren't able to open that up, they lost the round. There's not really a common point or a single point on this map, depending on your opinions of open, uh, that doesn't respond well to double heart destruction. Every single point on this map. The basement, obviously, with all the hatches, church wall, the breakdown there, and dirt, is its own kind of animal. Up here on the top floor, you've just got so much possibility that you generally need to get control of the entire top floor to make your push comfortable and viable. Rath, in the meantime, opens up with a pre-fire against NVK, drops him through the wall and catches him out, and that's a very good bit of momentum swing. The alibi means that, well, she might still have alibis out there that might get caught in pre-fires, but you know you've killed the real one at this point. I, I really thought as well that EG were going to hold this really aggressively. They would have like a jacuzzi side roam as well, but Young unable to catch out any sprinting men outside of the garage here. As EG still holding on, but they have lost a man in NVK. It looks like Shrug aren't even going for that construction side push at all. They have managed to Havana open just the top of that garage rafters. However, as Modega 
Makes his way downstairs into the lounge and Young still holding on to the garage entrance. But drones are coming upstairs in heavy amounts. And Shrug actually have a huge amount of utility up still as Cloud Shrug is going to try and capital bolt out the main wall. And there we go. Flynn should be able to get open that efficiently. Well, they're still trying to find the Maestro, and this Maestro is not really giving his life away as quickly as, well, Shrug's Maestro was keeping just the angle held. Young, with the patience of a Saint, is going to wait and see if he can do the killing of a Sinner now as anyone that might drift past the open door. And without him dead, they're going to find themselves in a bit of a tough spot. Misses the first little peeking duck that runs straight past, but Necrox finds loading. In the meantime, Rats creeps in underneath and Cloud does finally get rid of Young, but there's some quick bodies on the board as Rats drops the trade, and while well, they find themselves still the man up with a minute 10 left to go, you can see they're starting to set up their multifaceted push from all three different sides, one body apiece. And this is definitely where Shrug want to be in. Mexican does find that kill onto Necrox. It's all down to Geo to try and find three if he wants to bring this in. Cells and Nitrocell are available, but is not going to be available too long as Mexican just baits him out, peeks the door, and takes him down. It's looking really good now for Shrug as they've still managed to keep it even, surprisingly, here on Clubhouse. But also, you know, we, we talked about during the map bounds. This isn't exactly a map that EG play a lot. Yeah. So this might be the opportunity for Shrug to bring this in. And I think, honestly, if they can bring this to Coastline, they could they could definitely bring in the series, but Conchal's going to be a bit of a doozy, I think. It's always a bit of a roll of the dice when you go to a map like this. As, as we said at the very beginning, it's an often second ban throughout their run, throughout mm -hmm. uh, to Pro League this season. They've generally taken out of the equation. They've preferred to go to other potential maps. And, you know, and I guess in their favor, they've opted, well, we'll play this one this time and hope to get a bit of the level of, as we said, you're rolling on default strats, potentially. You might have stuff in the pocket, sure. You might have secret maneuvers that you've been practicing and maybe you're holding them, maybe you want to run them. Either way, when you come to a map like this where the default holds and the default ways of breaking those through are so well known, you're trusting in them and trusting in your gun skill to be what carries you through. Actually, you know, I rescind my earlier comment about the, the bands, the map bands. I think that if EG do not take this map, they are probably going to lose the series because the only wow. good map for them in this map pool is Coastline. It's it. Consular has not been a good map for them at all. They yeah, lost to Dark Zero in fair. the last play day, and in this second half, they haven't been good at it. It's 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 a very iffy map. That's also Shrug's pick. This is EG's map pick, and we've said about we've said a million times. We've just talked about it. This is not a map that EG normally go to. So. No. I think, you know, and seeing how close this map is right now, that Shrug have a massive opportunity to take this map away from them and put things massively into their own favor. I mean, if they can, it's a good mental game as well. As we said, so much of this is important, and unfortunately, Flynn came in this with the a slightly defeatist attitude, at least on Twitter, how they were maybe, saying. Maybe, you know, maybe that's maybe mind psychology. Games. That's you know, it. Mind games, yeah. Well, it's made Mo Digga leave the game, at least. Uh, they're going to keep on pushing, and I guess we'll see if we get called for a rehost. In the meantime, they've got to play this round out, and with a body up in their favor, surely this can invigorate Shrug to you for the first time this played uh, day so far in this game. Find themselves a foot up with the long oh. angles cloud takes care of the maestro on the top floor and that was a big problem in the previous round yeah definitely a great pickup by cloud Strike is already eg find themselves in a 5v3 right now zekrox nvk and geo are left remaining up on the point but shrug have a lot of control right now honestly with NVK playing below in the oil pit, trying to deny anyone who would dare push up into garage rafters right now. This is a this is a very awkward angle to try and hold because when someone knows you're here, it is a very easy pre-fire to get knocked off of. But NVK still going to be holding it down, still has a barbed wire in his back pocket as well. But while he's holding this, Shrugger taking a lot of control elsewhere, and that's kind of being distracted right now. So because smokes are going to go down into the site. Potentially, we'll see Shrug with a little bit more of a push. Necrox still has two of those smokes available. He's deployed one of them so far and just holding it all down. So, Fuji Arches, however, are going to go out. They're going to know that someone is playing around those cash stairs. And MVK still playing below, still playing patiently. 
I'm wondering if he's going to try and go for a rotate sooner rather than later, maybe into secret. Capital balls are going to go down from Cloudstruck, however, making sure that no one can rotate through that downstairs area. Nitro is going to go out, but it's going to miss. Flynn baiting it out with a plant right next to it. Geo is going to push all the way up. It's NVK and Netfrox both find kills of their own. It's all down to Flynn and Mexican to try and bring this in. Just one minute left to go on the clock. This is not looking good for Shrug at all, but there we go. Flynn does find the necessary pick to bring it back into an even man count. And Geo still holding down aggressively, does still see Flynn, but doesn't able to find the kill just yet. Well, he manages to put at least a body back in the favor and swing it to half of a man based on the health against two versus the single body, but full health of Mexican. He has 40 seconds. He has more than enough time to at least find another way of pushing this round if he needs to, and he's going to use some of his ex Kairos to crack open a potential other side. But it is going to give away at least some of his game as he swaps the rotate out. Bit of a bait and switch, but now with only 20 seconds on the board, this is the only play he's going to be able to make, and he's got a mountain of barbed wire and a set of stairs to climb slow. Low and steady is the name of the game, but it's given everything away as the two outlines of EG set themselves up in a firing oh. line, finds one, but unfortunately the double up took the body down. No rehost call just yet, but there we go. EG is going to be calling their rehost, so, so I'm going to swap back up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Shrug had a massive. Alrighty then, hello and welcome back to this insane map between EG and Shrug. I'm stood up, joined once again by the lovely Captain Fluke, and we get into round number 10 on this first map. Sorry, that was uh, that was me singing, was that music, oh, okay. actually? I it's thought okay. I would sing your entrance, yeah. but it was a little bit, I'm sorry bit about that. Time, it's a little bit mistimed, a little bit loud. Yeah, insane is definitely a good word for it. 5-4, we find ourselves, obviously EG still on defense, and, you know, what we've seen from Shrug, as we were saying just before the break, is they've been aggressively able to find their way back into these rounds. Some exactly. of them have come down to the wire, it's fair to say, but otherwise they've generally been pretty, well, consistent at finding ways through EG and being able to take apart some of their defenses. And, you know, they were almost, almost in the lead there in the previous round if it wasn't for some pretty, pretty quick plays there from EG. Yes, thing, things still looking pretty even, honestly, here. And we've seen Shrug with a number of successful attacks already. Let's have, have a look how it is going to be going down as we move into round number 10. Have a look what EG want to do to try and hold all of this down. And already kind of a pretty standard setup coming out from them across the board. And of course, like going for the K trick and going for the impact trick as well coming out from them. Something that wasn't missing from Shrug's lineup, but. Something they didn't manage to pull off successfully was the impact tricking into that kitchen hatch. Yeah, it seems like they kind of low efforted it. They didn't really throw themselves on it too much, and obviously, yeah, on, yeah we want to see we want to see a little bit more of that. But church is obviously the point that we can swing back to, and this could be EG setting themselves up for their second hold on this in a row. They've obviously lost it twice on their attack at least, but it seems like a very quick push is attempted down this dirt side. Yeah, Mexican's already already got this very early, early control coming through here. Uh, drones are going to go ahead of him and confirm the presence of a Maestro of Young. They're just playing around K9 and seeing what they can do, but there's quite a lot of people in this dirt tunnel actually to try and go for that, ready for that push. It looks like early control is going into the favor of Shrug, and seeing what they want to really do with that. It's going to be Wrath with the opening kill, and the double kill for a triple kill from Wrath. What the hell just happened? Wrath is going to get it refragged, however, by NVK, but another kill comes into the favor of Shrug, and it's all already down to NVK. He just managed to retake onto Dirt, loading goes down, and finds himself in a 1v3. NVK with it all to do if he wants to bring this in. He's got plenty of time to work with. He also still has a Nitro up on the board. Capital balls are going to go down. They're trying to confirm the presence of where exactly MVK is, but that default cam up onto the bottom of the main stairs is still up. Going to confirm the presence of someone in this side. Cloud truck is going to be there. Going to miss the Nitro. However, NVK takes him down, and Flynn begins to plant the defuse. It's a 1v2. NVK has it all to do. Oh, but he's going to go down, and Shrug will take the round. What was that? What an entry from Wrath. 5-5. Five, five. They find themselves now back on the balance, and as we said, it's been very back and forth quite a lot throughout this game. Only... We said two rounds going in either team's favor in a row, and they're going to keep that trend up, and Shrug just need to try and find a method of bringing it twice in a row. We How they respond to having three bodies dropped from a very, very aggressive swing in that, well, Rath's living up to his name and title and being able to find a way to take apart EG's defense again ties into what we said when we first came back from that little break. 
that is how they're taking EG down. They're having these moments. They're having these flares where they just throw themselves at EG and okay, really kind of put a team that is based around its meticulous game. nature to the test. And we're getting good results on their favor. I think this is also the difference between teams as well in these positions. Like EG clearly don't see Shrug as a threat going into the series. And I feel like that's their mentality behind map bands. But Shrug, they, they have everything to do here. They, they, they have nothing else going on for them. They can put a lot of effort into preparing for the series, right? And we are seeing the results of that preparation come through. I don't think anyone was expecting the first map to be this close. And honestly, I just think like going into Consulate, things already are looking really good for Shrug, no matter what the result actually ends up being here. EG need this to go to a decider if we do lose on Club, of course, because Coastline is the best map for them in this series, and things are just not looking good for them right now. But we still got a few more rounds to work with inside of regulation here. Of course, we do have overtime as well. Setting themselves up in well, slightly more aware situation, but the pace is coming as aggressive as it was before. They've set a bit of a firefight against some early peak windows there, and they're trying to hold them with a little bit more of a 10-foot pole at this point. But otherwise, Flynn is wasting no time droning through Dirt. Mexican is getting open the hatches that they need to, as well as the bodies already being inside Kitchen as Capitao danced around the top floor. This is Shrug making sure that the pressure is applied hot and fast because from that point onwards well we've seen how it went in the previous round and they're trying to replicate the magic because if you try and find eg on the back foot from then it seems to be everything in your favor more explosions more hatches and more angles are being controlled and eg at this moment are just trying to have to back around onto the point and keep their guns pointed away from them yeah lots of really early control coming out from shrug already and as you just mentioned just Loads of stuff getting opened up. Looks like they're mainly looking into a church push here, but really could be anyway because they have the dirt open as well as multiple hatches. It really could be any kind of push that they want to do here, and this is getting live a lot of options to show them what they want to do. NVK playing very aggressively onto Moto. Ian's going to get almost caught out there. He has kind of just about half HP right now. He does have still a Nitro up. He could throw onto main stairs, but Shroger taking their time with things, and honestly, there's no reason for them not to. Well, they're setting themselves up now and trying to find their footprints in a position where they can break down. As we said before, this is a very wide and a very tough point to make the final push on. And especially if you don't already have a body down, it's even tougher. Mexican is going to creep up dirt as the bodies above uh, the hatches try and hold any rotations and make sure they can catch them out. And the first of the remote gas canisters is going to slow down the diffuser as well as the entry frag possibilities. Young suffers a fair bit of damage from underneath as Raths is creeping his way from central stairs. Pops the Zephyr out to try and catch anything and is going to aggressively take Moto now. But they have been playing against this and they do still have the C4 ready to go over the top from MVK if he gets the call that there's someone there. Necrox finds the first again against the Habana in tunnel, nope. and also finds Mo Digger as Flynn finds Netcrux, swinging the balance all back in their favor. NVK from the back only sees one, gets him, but gets traded out, and now it's a two versus two as Young brings it back to a balance, but the Diffuser is cold in Dirt Tunnel. Grass is in the middle of a bit of a tight spot now, has to push between the firing lines of EG, and they are well aware of where he is. Yeah, Jung does have that control of the Diffuser going yeah, on for him. It's like he's going to try and retreat through. He takes him down. Oh, my God. What a shot from Rath as Clash pushes all the way in. He's got to know he's in blue. And Rath closes out the round. And Shrug put themselves on match point. What is happening right now? Rath is fragging out of his mind on Zofia. And he's putting EG in the dirt. Yeah, that was absolutely fantastic play there from Rath, who has really done well with the rehost and brought himself back into this game. Match point, but there's only one round in it to push it to overtime. So, you know, it's far from over for EG. Church has failed for them twice in a row now. They've lost four of their swings to it across this entire match, only pulling one. So they're going to opt for CCTV instead, historically in this map at least. A much more successful point for their team. Yeah, but don't forget, this This was actually pretty close to Shrug actually being able to bring this in on CCTV, and things are looking pretty good for them right now. Shrug, having been successful on three of their attacks so far, they just need one more if they do want to bring this in. This is looking really, really good, and honestly, going into overtime as well, if we do get there, it's looking pretty even across the board because we have three attack wins, and if we get to overtime, it's going to be three defense wins on each side. So... Really, it's completely 50-50 in terms of uh, picks, so we'll have a look at how this is going to be going down, and we'll see EG is opting to go to CCTV instead. I'm kind of hoping that EG gets a little bit more aggressive here. 
Yeah, I mean, we saw them flirt with the idea in the previous round. They put a couple of bodies against close windows, but they couldn't quite make anything of it. Whether they just didn't commit enough or whether Shrug just didn't take the bait, I guess we'll see if they can kind of make that translate for this point. Where they have struggled so far is, and it's not a matter of resting on their laurels, it's a matter of that Shrug are just kind of putting a lot of pressure down on them. We saw it more obvious in their attacks. As we said, EG like to be meticulous, they like to be slow, and they like to make sure that they know where every boot print has been before they try and mop them up. But this is them kind of not having that time, that possibility, because Shrug just keep popping up and keep popping people down, and if they can keep this up, they can very much swing this game in their favor. Yeah, no, they definitely, they definitely can, and uh, the interesting change up here from EG, they haven't brought a Jaeger this time, which, you know, I'm, I'm not completely against, because Shrug haven't really been bringing nades at all, so it might not go against them too much, but I, again, it kind of just seems like both teams have given up even trying to keep control over that server wall, but... But Modigan actually looking like to try and ban a trick to maybe waste a little bit of that early round time, but honestly, with the capital power from the board, you're just not going to be able to keep control. Well, the drone work's coming out, and Shrug are making sure they know where all the bodies are, and as it's to be expected the previous time they were here. However, the last time, well, they lost it once and took it once, and Geo is going to make sure that they at least get a little bit of the front foot here, dropping Mexican. Your Habana off the board, it's a bit of a loss, because it now severely limits your Capital to be able to do what he needs to do, and at least they got a little bit of the garage wall open, and... Rath is going to find a young to open as well, and that is that garage control. Yet again, they find themselves being led by the power of Rath, who is refusing to pull himself off the gas. Yeah, well, VK is going to go for a run out onto a strip. It looks like just checking his Valkyrie camera and making sure this is going to be successful and does peek it out slightly. But no one's watching right now, so MVK could just hold this angle all day if he really does want, but while he's doing that, Shrug are gaining control over the site, and MVK is going to quickly realize this. I'm wondering if Flint's going to go for that close plant again, but Geo is going to put Wrath in the dirt, and he is going to put the brakes on that car. And there we go, Shrug is now in a 3v4. Things not looking too good for them, but there's definitely opportunity for them to bring this in. There's a lot of time left for them still, as well as a lot of utility still up for both teams, really, because we still got C4s up from EG. Well, Shrug, what are you going to do without your man of the moment? You have the Capital Bolts to try and force people away, but that is going to be very quickly countered by Necrox's smoke. So they know they can't really throw themselves in a smoke plant position because, well, they're well aware that it's probably going to quickly turn against them. At the same time, they're struggling to find the angles in, and with the close down of MVK below, it's only a matter of time before some potential cover might come across it. Flynn's going to try the close plant, and not loading is going to offer some much-needed cover as a C4 can completely whiffs, and there is a post-plant situation. Flynn finds it in and amongst, and now we find ourselves with all the angles held and Geo on the floor. Valkyrie has finally found her way to the firefight, and it's going to get... Yes, does find one of the bodies on the rappel, but there's the Capitao who swings around and puts us in a very tight position. 2-2, two, two, but one of them is just being picked up. Yeah, Geo, very, very low HP. Necrox with it all to do here as he pushes all the way up. But Necrox is also low HP right now as well. Flint's on the rappel outside. He's going to find one. It's all down to Necrox to try and bring this in. And no! Shrug take the round and they take the map. Oh my god. What a map from Shrug. And this, it puts EG in a horrible position right now. Well, a turn of the half and a result not even the players expected, but we will be heading to our second trip onto Consular after a little bit of a break. Shrug, keep it up. EG, well, let's see if you can show up on a slightly tougher map for you. We will see you in just a few.